breaking tonight. Former Education Minister Dame Andrea Jenkins has submitted a letter of no confidence in the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, with further rebellion from the Tory backbenchers expected to continue. Let me read you a little bit of an extract from this letter, because it could not be stronger. Enough is enough. If it wasn't bad enough that we have a party leader that the party members rejected, the polls demonstrate that the public reject him, and I am in full agreement. It is time for Rishi Sunak to go. It goes on. Rishi's Machiavellian involvement in getting rid of our democratically elected leader, Boris Johnson, who bravely fought for Brexit when Parliament was in deadlock. Yes, Boris, the man who won the Conservative Party a massive majority, was unforgivable enough. But then to purge the centre-right from his cabinet, there we go. I mean, it goes on here. Then to purge the centre-right from his cabinet and then sack Suella, who was the only person in the cabinet with the balls to speak the truth of the appalling state on our streets and a two-tier policing system that leaves the Jewish community in fear for their lives and safety. There's a heck of a lot more to it. I'm delighted to say that we are joined by Dame Andrea right now. Look, you start by saying enough is enough. What was the final straw for you? Oh, gosh, why do I start, Patrick? Um, I mean, I've, I've just run out of patience, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I, I saw some green shoots where it was um, rolling back on net zero, which we needed to do. But, you know, the way he treated Boris, the way... Um, <sighs> really the young conservative policies that we've got coming through. And today, I mean, he could have moved Suella to a different position. You know, that's always in the Prime Minister's gift, but he has purged um, my wing of the party out of um, cabinet. Um, and yeah, and really Suella, she was speaking up for the people. I mean, I was at rem four remembrance services at, um, on Sunday and God, I lost count of the, amount of people who came to me and said that she's speaking up for me on what she's saying about the two-tier policing system. Let me just drill down on that. Do you think that Suella has been right on basically all of her most controversial moments? The invasion of the South Coast, the hurricane of people coming to the Western world, the two-tier policing and the hate marches. Do you think she was right on all of those things and Rishi Sunak in sacking her is wrong? I, I'm not going to agree on necessarily every one of those things, and I would have chose words slightly different, if I'm honest. But um, she got a real sense of the frustration of the public. And, I mean, what we saw on the streets was just disgusting, Patrick. And if this is modern-day Britain, it needs reforming. And she was right. She was the only person to actually stand up and speak out on that who was in the Cabinet. Obviously, we've got fantastic people like Pretty and Jacob, in, you know, um, who's no longer in the Cabinet, who sp spoke out. But she was the only one who was actually in Cabinet. So I took my hat off to her. Has Rishi Sunak just committed political suicide by getting rid of Suella Braverman? Well, I think if you look at the cabinet reshuffle, I mean, I, I do like David Cameron, by the way, and I, I am him and Osborne was brilliant with me when I, um, you know, um, unseated Ed Bowles and they came up and gave me lots of support. And I was I was disappointed when he resigned and he will do a fantastic job as a foreign secretary. But to me, it's what it looks like, Patrick. You know, I, 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 like I said, I really like David Cameron and he'll do a good job, but it's what it looks like. When you bring somebody um, in, in a red wall seat like mine, when you bring somebody on board who has actually um, resigned because of he didn't agree with the, um, the Brexit referendum result, um, it's actually turning people off in seats like mine. And it makes people think, why, is, are the people within the party itself not, not good enough to, to go into cabinet? Um, and his decision, you know, who the heck is advising him? And also, I mean, I, I really get on very well with Richard, the party chairman, Patrick. Mm. But don't forget that, you know, I don't think it's a good look um, where the new party chairman is, um, hasn't, you know, he's doing a chicken run. Um, so he won't have a seat at the next election. He's trying to get a safer seat. What, that's not a good look for a party chairman, Patrick. And whoever's advising the prime minister, for God's sake, you know, they need sacking. Do you think other MPs should hand letters of no confidence in? 
I hope so, Patrick. I mean, to me, it's bigger than just a party. We're fighting for our country now, and we are fighting for not only conservatism, but we're trying to stop the likes of Starmer getting in number 10, and we cannot do that with Rishi Sunak. Look, we've been a year now of Rishi Sunak in post, and look, we're hemorrhaging votes. Um, I've had people resign membership from my constituency, and we've seen it up and down the country, and... It's not a conservative to me. We, we, and I, I mean, I don't agree with what Edwina said, um, you know, that, that we are just a certain um, group of the party. You know, if you look at the party membership, we, you know, we're more in tune with it, this so-called wing of the party and the general public. So, um mm. No, so I agree with, okay. uh, disagree with what she said. Well, you, you obviously want Rishi Sunak out. Who do you want in? Um, it depends who puts their name forward. Um, and one person I don't want is Kemi. I mean, a lot among MPs, she's known as the great pretender. Um, let's not forget how she voted for every one of Theresa May's deal. She, um, she's known as a great pretender. I've had so many people tell me she's called that in Parliament um, because she makes out she, she's this work warrior. Yes, she may be on that issue, but she will she will move to whatever position to get into power, just like Mr Sunak did. And we don't want an heir to Sunak. You know, we want a true conviction politician. So let's see who puts the name forward. But I, I will be back in the person who's got true conviction. OK, all right. And, and are you going to openly call for other people to hand letters in in the House of Commons in the coming week, do you think? Um, well, I'll be having chats with people, Patrick. Um, but... Let's let's also be um, realists um, here. Look with Theresa May. Um, I, you know, I resigned in the May, um, and we saw Boris and um, David Davis and a few others from the July doing all these mass resignations. She won a vote of no confidence in the December, and it wasn't until the um, you know till the spring that um, she actually um, stepped down. So it's a slow process, but the fact is we're running out of time this time. And this we've got to save we've got to save conservatism and we've got to save right. the country from somebody, you know, Starmer who twice tried to get Corbyn in number ten. This is serious stuff, um, Patrick, and we need to stop them. I mean, it's incredibly strong stuff from yourself, and I want to thank you very much for coming on and sticking your head above the parapet. It's an incredibly brave thing to do. That is Dame Andrea Jenkins there. He was the first Conservative MP to hand in a letter of no confidence, wants other people to do it, thinks the Tories are doomed under Rishi Sunak and is openly calling for a new leader.